Okay, so the topic of this video will be gene mutations. Let's go ahead and get started. You know, before we get started, here's a few questions to ponder. Pause the video, give these questions some thought. I'm going to proceed. So when we talk about mutations, this is a change in genetic material. So in the picture, we see that a gene is a segment of DNA with instructions to build a protein. You might know a gene is a piece of DNA with A's, T's, C's, and G's in between, and those A's, T's, C's, and G's are going to tell uh, the, the cell how to build various proteins. Now, some mutations, if there's an accident, if there's a change in the genetic material, some mutations have no impact. Some mutations can actually be helpful, and other mutations can be harmful. So here's a piece of DNA, and mutations generally happen during the process of DNA replication. During the process of DNA replication, the DNA is separated in half, and then the left side is used as a template to build a new piece of DNA, A's pair to T's and C's pair to G's. While that's happening, the same thing on the right side. The right side is a template to build a new piece of DNA, A's pair to T's and C's pair to G's. Notice how the blinking nucleotide is a mistake. A T should not be bonded to a C. Every now and then mutations happen, and that's the point of this video. So mutations tend to be caused by what we call mutagens, and these are agents in the environment, something in the environment that can cause mutations. A great example is UV radiation from the sun. We know overexposure can lead to uh, mutations that can trigger skin cancer and smoking. You know, for people who smoke, uh, that can lead to mutations that might cause lung cancer. So these are good examples, UV radiation and the, uh, the chemicals in, in cigarettes uh, that would be considered mutagens. So here are a bunch of DNA nucleotides in black, A's and T's and C's and G's. And from left to right, if I were to say perform transcription, let's make RNA, and in red, A's and U's and C's and G's are matching appropriately. Again, this is transcription. And then if I underline the AUG, that's a start codon. And then every three nucleotides or every codon, I'm going to underline every three nucleotides. And I'm going to stop at the UGA because that's a stop codon. And if you remember how translation works, the ribosome will read AUG. So we look on the genetic code chart here. We find AUG. Transfer RNA will deliver methionine. And then the ribosome reads the next codon, UCC, transfer RNA delivers serine. And then the next codon, GAA, that's glutamic acid. The next, AGC, that's serine. And then the next codon, CCG, that's proline. And then the ribosome would stop because it gets the stop codon. That's how it's supposed to work. But now we're going to talk about a point mutation where there's a substitution in a single nucleotide. An example would be a missense point mutation. So on the bottom here, I just copy and pasted. This is the exact same information on top as is the bottom. On top, however, this is going to be our normal genetic information. On the bottom, we're going to have a missense point mutation. See that right there? that in yellow, that is not supposed to be a T nucleotide. That was supposed to be an A. We're pretending a mistake happened and a T was made. Well, during the process of transcription, that, uh, that will be copied into an A. And so when the ribosome comes to this codon, if we were to find ACC on the chart, there's the chart, there's ACC. Notice it's a different amino acid. It's not serine anymore. The tRNA, the transfer RNA, would deliver the amino acid called threonine. That's the wrong amino acid. But this is an example of how a mistake in the DNA can lead to a mistake in the RNA. And then that mistake in the RNA can be carried over to a mistaken amino acid. And so this leads to a change in the amino acid. And overall, if, uh, if the, the protein is made from incorrect amino acids, even though it's only one amino acid, this can alter the shape of the overall protein. You know, a great example of this, you've probably heard of sickle cell disease. Hemoglobin is a protein. 
It's made from 574 amino acids. And unfortunately for sickle cell disease, 573 amino acids are perfect, but one amino acid has been substituted and in a missense mutation, and it alters the shape of hemoglobin protein, which alters the shape of red blood cells. So a life-threatening disorder caused by one wrong amino acid in a protein. So another example of a point mutation will be a silent mutation. Now remember, on top, this is our normal genetic information. Here is the exact same copy on the bottom, but now we're gonna add a silent point mutation. Here it is in yellow. That G pretend has been mistaken into an A. Well, through the process of transcription, you have that yellow U now. And so when you look at the amino acid chart, when the ribosome reads UCU, you find UCU, hey, look at this, UCU, it's the same amino acid, it's still serine. And so there was no change in the amino acid, even though there's a mistake in the DNA, even though there's a mistake in the RNA, luckily the same amino acid was still delivered. As a result, this does not change the overall shape of the protein, hence the reason why it's called a silent mutation. So this would be an example of a harmless mutation. Okay, so let's talk about another type of mutation, a frame shift mutation. This is where there's an insertion or a deletion of a nucleotide where there shouldn't be anything at all. And so on top again is our normal genetic information, but on the bottom, I'm gonna add a frame shift deletion. You see that blinking T right there. Pretend there was a mistake where that blinking T was deleted. Well, if that happened when we were to do transcription, that will that A right there still be created during transcription? And I hope you know the answer is no. And so that A wouldn't exist anymore. And now the reason this is called a frame shift is because this is gonna cause a shift in the codon reading. Remember, the ribosome reads three nucleotides at a time, not two. And so notice what just happened. The reading shift, the, the reading frame, the reading frame of the ribosome shifted. So when the ribosome gets to this, GCC, if we have the chart, there it is, GCC, that's a different amino acid. It's not serine anymore. GCC, tRNA, transfer RNA, would deliver alanine. And then the ribosome would come to this codon, CGU. CGU, notice it's not proline anymore. Transfer RNA would deliver arginine. And then we come to what's supposed to be a stop codon, but it's not a stop codon anymore. Find GAC, there it is, aspartic acid. Transfer RNA would mistakenly bring aspartic acid. And the ribosome would keep going because there's no longer a stop codon. And we find CAU and transfer RNA would deliver histidine. And eventually you just run out of nucleotides and so the process would stop. But you can see this is a much more serious uh, error because it changes the shape of the, of the protein, the wrong amino acids made from mostly wrong amino acids. And in this, in this example, in this example, the protein's just made from too many amino acids as well. And so notice what happened is that the stop codon was lost. In other examples, maybe a premature start codon would accidentally be created. And in other examples, uh, this one would be a good example, is that the polypeptide is made from mostly wrong amino acids. Let's do another one. Let's do what's called a frame shift insertion. Let's insert a nucleotide where it doesn't belong. Pretend a mistake happened and a fourth T got inserted right there. It's not supposed to be there and everything else, all the nucleotides after shifted down. Well, during transcription, all these nucleotides would be created. And so when the ribosome gets to this codon, AAG, we look up AAG, and we can see that's lysine. And then we get to the next codon, CCC. Hey, a little bit of good luck here. Uh, it was supposed to be proline, and it still is. But now we come to what's supposed to be a stop codon, but it's not a stop codon any anymore. Find GUG, it's valine. Transfer RNA will deliver valine. 
And the ribosome just keeps going because there's no longer a stop codon. We find ACC, it's threonine, transfer RNA or deliver threonine. And the ribosome keeps going because there's no longer a stop codon. AUU, isoleucine, transfer RNA will deliver isoleucine. So you can see again, the stop codon was lost and this polypeptide is made from mostly wrong amino acids. So let's do a little bit of review. Read the blue box and try to figure out what describes scenario A and B and C. So for scenario A, I hope you said, this is an example of a missense and a substitution mutation. For B, I hope you said an insertion and a frame shift mutation. And for C, I hope you said a deletion and a frame shift mutation. Well, what impact do mutations have on offspring? Well, it depends. Where is the mutation? Let's talk about somatic cell mutations. Remember, somatic cells would be examples of non-sex cells, body cells, like blood cells, muscle cells, bone cells, skin cells, nerve cells. The majority of your body falls into the somatic, uh, somatic cell category. And so if there's a mutation in a somatic cell, well, that's only going to affect the individual. You look at this picture right here. The man in this picture has been sunburned. If this man develops skin cancer, a skin cancer mutation as a result of his sunburn. If he has children in the future, will his children inherit the skin cancer mutation? And I hope you see the answer is no. Skin cancer is a somatic cell. Uh, skin cells are somatic cells. And you don't make children using skin cells. Men, uh, of course, uh, contribute a sperm cell and women contribute an egg cell. So in this case, in a somatic cell mutation, any mutations are not passed on to future generations. Well, what about germ cell mutations? Now, when you hear the word germ, you probably think of like bacteria and viruses. That's not what we're talking about. A germ cell in this context are the diploid cells that undergo meiosis to make sperm in men and eggs in women. If these are mutated, well, now we might have a, a, an example where the mutation can be passed on. So imagine this scenario, here's an egg cell, and here comes a bunch of sperm cells. Notice how the one sperm cell is flashing and has an M inside of it. Pretend that's a mutated sperm cell. Well, if that sperm cell were to fertilize the egg cell, then yes, that mutation could be passed on to future generations. So throughout this video, a couple times I've brought up cancers. And so cancer is a disorder in which body cells will lose their ability to control their growth. They're basically stuck in mitosis where they just keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. So normally a cell will receive a signal to advance to the next stage of the cell cycle. A signal from, if a cell is in interphase, it will receive a signal to go to prophase. And then at the end of prophase, it receives a signal to go to metaphase. At the end of metaphase, it receives a signal to go to anaphase and so on. And so there's a lot of genes that are involved in this cell cycle in regulating when cells divide. Now, the analogy I like is that genes are often like light switches. When the gene is turned on, they create protein. So here's four genes, A, B, C, and D. And right now they're all in the off position. But let's say there's a mutation. A mutation in these genes might lead to cancer. Let's pretend that because of, of a mutation, gene B and C get turned on, and these genes might be important in uh, the cells multiplying. So even though they're supposed to be off, they're in the on position, and this kind of triggers them to just multiply and multiply and multiply. And so cancer cells, therefore, would then not respond to the signals that normally control their, the cell's ability to grow because the genes have been activated when they're not supposed to be. And so cancer cells can now divide uncontrollably and form like this gray mass that you see in the picture called a tumor. And if the cancer cells enter the bloodstream, those cancer cells can travel around the body and spread. So there you go, a little review on uh, mutations. Uh, pause the video, try to answer these questions. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.